Welcome back to the kitchen. It's Chef Chip, and this is Smokehouse. Today we're playing with beef. It's what's for dinner. Has been for years. Sam Elliott said it best, but the bottom line is beef is what's fun for me. And we're gonna play with today beef tenderloin, and we've got bone-in short ribs that we're gonna play with today. The tenderloin does not take real long for us to smoke. The short ribs is almost an overnight run for us. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with both of these pieces. They're certified Hereford beef. So they rank right up in there with your good cab Angus beef products. Wonderful marbling and statue. And we're gonna have a lot of fun. So we're gonna get started. All right, so we're gonna get started getting our meat ready for the smoker. The short rib is the easiest piece, but it takes the longest. It's gonna take us about a 17 hour cook, the way we're gonna do it, about 240 degrees overnight. Normally the way I get it set up, I put it in the afternoon. A good piece of hickory in there, cut. You can see the four bones are running all the way through. We're gonna take these right now. We're gonna rub them with some oil. All the edges and the sides, we're gonna rub it all down with the all oil. All the edges and the sides. And then we're gonna hit this with my Calgary steak seasoning, very similar to McCormick's Montreal that you find in your grocery stores at home. Got a little bit of a heavier bite on this than what you get out of the McCormick. It's, uh, this is good stuff. This is R.L. Schreiber out of Florida, and it is my preferred brand of spice for everything. They do a phenomenal job. And then I've got my sweet and smoky barbecue rub. That's my house rub that we use for just about everything. We're going to coat it on both sides. Again, 225 degrees. Hickory wood. We want that hardwood. Low and slow smoke with these wonderful boys here. So that's where we're at with those. And they're a lot of fun. Next up, we've got that certified Hereford beef, beef tenderloin. We're going to bring it over here in all of its untrimmed glory. It doesn't look at all like a filet steak yet. But when we're done, we're gonna, you're gonna see exactly how those work. These come pre-trimmed normally for you at the grocery stores. We don't get that lucky in the shop. So we've gotta clean and trim all this stuff off. But that's a benefit for us because it makes the trim, makes some of the best hamburgers you'll ever have. So at this point on this outside, we're pulling the chain off is what that's called. That's where it's still partially, and you can see where it was connected across the bottom here to the inside of your rib cage on that beef. And we're gonna trim this off. This is very gnarly in this state here, the way we work with it. It's not gonna be any fun for us on a filet or beef tenderloin steak. You can literally pull most of it off, and then down here on what I call the butt end of it, it's got two little flaps on each side, and you can literally just cut it right off of there. Don't be afraid, but be take your time when you deal with it. It is a very expensive piece of beef. Not one to hurry through and make mistakes with, but it is well worth the time when you do. All right, so we've peeled that piece down. We're coming over on this side. It's got a little bit more on it on this side. The big thing on the side opposite your chain is to clear this, this fat to get down to just the beef. And you'll see a lot of this will just pull almost directly apart and right off. Wonderful chef. Worked for my father growing up, frankly. Picked on me, but it, it paid huge dividends and made me trim these with no knives as a kid in the kitchen. I learned uh, quite a bit and called him a few names at the same time. But Frankie was a hell of a guy. Made me learn how to stir with both hands, two pots at the same time. Outside of working for him, I've never used it again, but I can do it if I need to. Then we've got this silver skin, and we just kind of get started underneath it, and we just run our knives back across it. You see it just kind of trims up off there. Don't try to take it all in one slice. Take two or three or four slims, slim slices, and just work your way down. Push your knife against the silver so that you leave your beef on your filet. That silver will let the knife slide right across it without taking too much beef off of it. So we got one more piece in here that we're gonna try to get off. Slide back down there. So we've cleaned the top. 
now off a little bit more down here at that end. We're going to flip it over. You've got a couple packets. We see our spice rub from the short rib, but that's not going to hurt anything. We're just going to slide a little bit down across this way just to get the kind of loose stuff that's sitting there on top. And again, all this we're going to set off to the side. We have our cleaned beef tenderloin. Now for this recipe today, we're going to smoke this, but we're going to marinate it in a tomato and fig rub. So I've got a puree right here. I've just taken dried figs. I've soaked them in a little water overnight. Turned around and added the Campari tomatoes. We added a splash of apple vinegar. Pureed it in the bullet if my wife's at home. If not, I use the blender. She doesn't like it when I use the blender or the bullet for things in the kitchen, but we do really well with it. It's a great product. We've got, it's just a paste. We're gonna rub that right across the top. My father always told me to use the two best tools God gave you when you can, and that's your hands. And uh, I do use them quite a bit. We get those all done. Let me reach back. All right, so I've cleaned those two great tools that I've got. And I'm getting ready. We're going to sprinkle this up again. I want to use that Rocky Mountain. We've used it a few times, and it's one of my favorite go-tos. That's the chocolate coffee and pepper blend that we use. It's a really nice product. Kind of a dark, deep, and rich. And we're just going to sprinkle that on top. And that's ready for the smoker as well. We're going to leave it at the 225 that we're cooking our short ribs at. But we're going to go run both of these out. We're going to get them in that smoker, 225 hard hickory wood and then we're going to come back and get started on some side dishes all right so we've got our meat in the smoker we're ready to start on some side dishes so a few things we're going to work on today we're going to make a succotash we're going to make some lionese potatoes and then we're going to make garlic toast and a watercress salad to play with on that tenderloin as well so we're going to start with our lionese potatoes they're going to take the longest we're going to turn our skillet up over here so we can start to saute our potatoes while that's warming up. Get a little just EVOO going here on the side. We're just going to do some thin slices. Now being a, we're going to do this as a fried potato. Once I get these sliced, we want to rinse those off with water, rinse that excess starch off. It'll help it cook and brown better in our skillets for us so we can rinse all that off. I've gone through the magic of television and rinsed these off for you. And we're going to start to put these in right over here, right now for us. Love the sound of a hot skillet. Take this down in there. Turn around and we're going to add a few red onions. And we're going to season it up. A little bit of that kosher salt I use so much. I'm going to use a little bit of black pepper. And I want a little bit of herbs in there as well. Alright, we're going to let that work. Hopefully it settles down and you can still hear me over all that. And we're going to move on to the succotash. Succotash is a highlight of mine. We're going to get a little bit of butter going. I was a lima bean kid growing up. Mama cooked that for me quite a bit. And I was normally the only one besides her that would eat it. So we're going to put some butter in there. But I was all about my lima beans. As I grew up, started playing in the kitchen, I developed love for a whole lot of beans. We've cooked giant beans before, also known as butter beans by my grandmother. Today we're going to use the lima beans and we've got some cannellonis. We're going to put some sweet and red onions in there. And then we've got, like I said, our cannelloni and our lima beans right here that we're going to add in. And then we've got some roasted corn. Just took some bicolored corn, roasted it for a minute in the oven, cut it right off the cob. We're going to let these sizzle for a minute, add some garlic. 
right? Kosher salt. Black pepper again. Pinch of crushed red flakes. Or two. It's one of those days. Back over here to check our potatoes. Just stirring. Got a good heat working. Starting to see little bits of brown already, so we know that those potatoes are cooking down real well. We're gonna turn this up to get a little action in here. Got our butter melted. We're gonna add those cannellonis. And I parboiled those cannellonis after I'd soaked them overnight. They're another one like a white bean, maybe bean that can take a little while to soften. And then I've got some baby lima beans right here. Just gonna start working those into that butter. And then that roasted corn. Let that sizzle for just a second there. Small chunks, some of those Campari tomatoes to throw into that as well to give it just a little bit more color. I prefer Camaris or Kumados, which are a brown tomato. They're both very tender, delicate flesh. They don't pop real hard. They don't have that snap you get from your greenhouse tomatoes. They're full of flavor, profile, and then I like to play with the heirlooms as well. But nothing beats a Midwest right off the vine. Just salt, pepper, and a big scoop of cottage cheese and we've got lunch. At this point, I'm gonna sprinkle that with just a little bit of paprika. See that that's sizzling. Looking good. To our potatoes and onions over here. Our linase. Starting to work down real well there for us. Our beef short rib with our bones have been in that smoker now for a little bit of a, quite a while. And what we're gonna do here is bring some out and we're gonna coat it with our house-made Alabama white barbecue sauce. This is our house-made white barbecue sauce. So you've got that horseradish and cream flavor with the mayonnaise. You've got a little bit of sweetness and sugar coming in on the backside and a, and a pop of vinegar. And it is great. It's one of the best things you can toss chicken wings in, hands down, is that Alabama white. Baste your chicken right off the grill with it. It's phenomenal by default on any beef. So beef brisket's great with it, but we love coating it. And we'll do about three coats of that Alabama white on those short ribs in the smoker. And we'll literally go out with a mop. We're gonna mop it right on top of it. We're gonna do it three times, about 30 minutes in between each mop. We want it to caramelize in between. And that's what we're gonna get ready to go do here in a minute. And we'll come back and check on our potatoes. All right, so we've been busy in the smoke room. We've got our beef short rib and we've got our beef tenderloins ready to roll. Our succotash is done. Our lineage potatoes are right there, very close. Give them a little more sizzle here. So we're gonna make a quick little salad. And we're gonna make some garlic toast and then we're gonna put some food together. So we're start making garlic toast. I like the thick Texas toast for this because we're using it with that tenderloin and that smoke flavor. I want it to hold up. I want it to absorb the juices that I get out of it. I don't want any of that to go to waste. I'm also a guy that really likes to serve my filet on a piece of garlic toast so that it sops up all my steak juices as I'm eating and I get all that goodness. Sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan right up on there. Just a pinch of sea salt. We're gonna go flip it right upside down and just let all that melt right into the bottom of that skillet. All right, so now we're gonna make a quick little salad. We've got some watercress here. Put that down right inside there. Okay, so we've got some room in there. And then with that, we're gonna do some heirloom tomatoes. A little more Parmesan. All right, while that's working, we're gonna take a little bit of apple vinegar right here in this bowl. Take a little brown sugar. Solve that down in there. A little bit of fig jam. Break that down inside there as well. 
and if you would rather have an emulsified version you can do this same thing in your blender a Cuisinart and you can emulsify up to give it that thicker dressing but I'm quite content with a separating version we're gonna pour all that right over that water crust I'm just gonna give that a good stir up in there check our garlic toast here Brown work on that. So we're going to start right here. Pull this out of the way. Set this up here out of the way. And I'm going to turn around and I'm going to grab our short ribs. As they came out of the oven, we hit them once again with a little bit more of the white barbecue rub to let it start to soak down. Be afraid. That's just the sugar as we've coated it and they're tender. I'm being real careful. I don't want to rip all those bones out of there. There we go. At this point, grab our dish right here. Grab a spoon. We're going to start with our lionese potatoes. And I'll slide those down in on one side. Plenty of those good grilled onions in there. We're gonna grab our succotash right in here on the other side with it. This is not portioned for faint at heart. So if you're one of those small eaters, make sure you bring a doggy bag. You're gonna need it. Then we're gonna take our short ribs. You can see that bone is just pulling right out. So there's two ways to do this. You can pull it out. You can leave it right on there. We can slide those ribs right up on there and leave the bone in. Have you a little bit of a nice dinosaur rib there. You can also jerk it right on out of there just like that. Look at that, it just pulls right out. And you can always slice it as well. Slice that will put the Bone ends right there. Come right back here on this side with the slice so that you can see both, both options. And right there is the start of our white, Alabama white barbecue smoked bone in short rib with succotash and lionese potatoes. All right, so now it's time for our beef tenderloin. Got a wonderful candy glaze that smoke from the hardwood on top. So the one thing we're going to take our toast, put it right there. We're going to get us a couple nice slices down here. Just going to work our way down through and take some of that, slide it right across on top of there. Come back with our watercress salad. there. If you're really artistic, you can get it to stand straight on its own. Get it up there. We're going to pour again a little bit of the drizzle just to help absorb up in there. And this is a smoked beef tenderloin with a watercress salad. Of course, we've got the rest of this beef tenderloin and you can slice it and dice it all day. cuts here on it and you can turn around and cut it thick as well for steaks and we can just keep lining it up pull it out early get temperature you can have it as rare as you want or as well done as you want but either way we've got a wonderful tender piece of meat it's just gonna eat like butter all right so we know what's for dinner tonight it's beef again but next time when we come back we're gonna play with the pig, Indiana's favorite meat. It's one of the largest producers of pork in the United States and we're gonna have a lot of fun with that.